Hello. Isn't that funny? Can you see that? It says can't touch this. I got this in Arizona not long ago. Everything in Arizona wants to bite you. Everything. It's crazy. I'm Mary from Kamash Fiber Arts and I hope I'd spend a little bit of my Saturday evening with you. Maybe spin a little bit, chat a little bit. Um, I wanted to let you guys know, let me move my camera so I can look at you. I wanted to let you guys know we started our 2021 spinning and fiber extravaganza workshop. It started on the first. So if you are a brand new spinner, or if you are having difficulties with spinning and balance and ply and all sorts of stuff, the um, workshop is for you. Hello. Um, the January um, module is already completed. We are going to have Jim Ector. Hello, Teresa. We're going to have Jim Ector. He will be our guest, one of our guest speakers for January. He'll show his workshop and um, all the spindles that he makes. And then we will get somebody to do some drop spindling demos and things like that. So um, if you're not on Facebook, there is a private Facebook group for um, anybody that subscribes. But if you're, you are not on Facebook, we will put all the live demos or taped demos from our guest instructors on the um, class page. So please don't worry about that. There's a lot of people that don't have Facebook and they're worried that they're going to miss something. Um, we're going to talk about fiber prep, worsted, woolen, scouring, though the scouring is not gonna go as in depth as the certification course but we will go into scouring and dyeing and um, spinning to weave or spinning to knit or spinning to crochet. There's gonna be so many awesome things in this course um, throughout the year. So um, when you go into the class and look at the module, some of them may change as things go on and people request different things, but it's gonna be fun. And a lot of people that are in the Facebook page have a lot of fiber experience in other venues that can help each other. So the Facebook page is a really great resource um, for camaraderie because 2021 is gonna need some sort of, <laughs> some sort of group and camaraderie. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's that. But it, um, check it out, it's at Kamaj School of Fiber Arts and it's the Kamaj Fiber Arts 2021 Spinning and Fiber Extravaganza workshop. So that is done. Oh, and it's $15 for the first month and $19 for every month after that. Okay. So I thought I would spin a little bit. <laughs> if you want to watch me and hang out, you can. Um, I'm spinning this green. I'm not sure what color it's coming up on there, but it's green with a little bit of, I think it's viscous and it has some shiny stuff in there. So it's pretty glittery. Cheryl, let me move my camera down so you can see my wheel. Won't necessarily be a lesson, but at least there'll be something to do tonight, huh? How was your New Year's? Did you have a good New Year's? We had a really quiet New Year's. We spent it with some neighbors and um, yeah, ate a lot of food. That was it. Um, I'm spinning on my Kromsky Sonata. And I'm spinning a thick and thin with this, with this fiber. Maybe I'll do some coils later. Yeah, I think a lot of the fiber shows are already um, closed down for 2021, at least the ones that I know of at the beginning of the year. I know Plyaway's closed. Um, what other ones? Spa night with your daughter. Awesome. Oh, that's so nice. Happy New Year, Kathleen. Happy New Year. Hopefully nothing takes us by surprise this year. We kind of know what's going on, what to expect, I think. And um, that's why I thought I would do the, um, the workshop because, like I said, so many things are closed this year. 
and I won't be, I won't be traveling teaching as well. And um, I thought it'd be really fun. And I cannot believe the amount of new spinners this year. It's crazy. Like on some of the Facebook pages, it's everybody seems to be spinning yarn lately. It's kind of fun, kind of fun. But um, when I started spinning, Happy New Year from New Zealand, Susan. Yay, is it summer or winter there? <laughs> uh, it's Well, it's always summer in Florida. It's winter everywhere else in the country but in Florida. I was going to say when I started spinning, um, there weren't a lot of classes. Well, there were probably some classes. I just didn't do them. But there wasn't a lot of YouTube videos. There weren't a lot of books. So I started art yarn spinning and then um, really needed to buckle down and learn the fundamentals of spinning. So I thought, well, let me start really researching things and looking into some of the, you know, some of the people that have spun a long time ago and maybe some of the mathematics of spinning. And then I took a class um, with JC Boggs and um, did willing to woolen to worsted, and then I was hooked. Um, Jojo, I'm actually spinning a thick and thin. Oh, it's summer, you wouldn't think so today, huh? So you can see the thick part here, it's not very thick, I'm not doing it super thick. Tell that to the iguanas <laughs> when it gets really cold. See, we don't have the iguanas here in this part of Florida, I think they're more south maybe near Miami, but um, so when it gets really cold, the, the um, iguanas, they must go into some sort of hibernation state and then they fall out of the trees because I don't know, they're kind of faint. I guess they faint or something, but the people that eat them, oh, they're, dude, they are like picking them up by the bucket loads. They're like, yay. They probably look forward to that time of year. <laughs> Okay, so uh, my grandson was over one time, and um, his name's Oliver, and he knows a lot about, every oh my gosh, he hears something and he remembers it. He's just got kind of this mind where he remembers everything. So he said, um, alligators or crocodiles or whatever, um, when it gets cold, the ice um, freezes and they stick their nose out of the water and the ice freezes around their noses and then their nose is like up like this and the water's like here um, so they can breathe and I'm like no way so I always have to google um, his fun facts because I, I don't know he just comes up with some really crazy stuff and that was true that was true it's crazy look it up google it Alligators or crocodile, uh, probably alligators. Alligators in um, freezing water, <laughs> ice water. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen. We call them Oliver-isms. <laughs> uh, he's a funny kid, funny kid. I was just talking to my daughter today how sometimes kids learn things and they, they act like they reinvent the wheel, right? Because <laughs> their knowledge um, you know, what they grasp onto is like it's the first time anybody's ever heard it before. <laughs> so um, my daughter, um, they went to get steak one night, right? And um, Oliver ordered, he's 14. He's a big kid, a big kid with a really deep voice for 14. He's got a lot of testosterone. So um he ordered a medium rare steak and he didn't realize it was um, like red inside. But when um, they were talking about well done steaks, he goes, well done is, um, he goes, well done is almost burnt. He goes, I just thought it was like, you said, well done job to the, um, <laughs> to the chef. Well done. <laughs> oh my gosh. So funny. Uh, oh, Jude. Oliver is a future Jeopardy contestant. And you know what's so funny is like he, um, he's an awesome kid. Oh, my grandkids are awesome. But he, um, you know, he has trouble with math and stuff. But man, that kid can remember and he has to hear it. He remembers everything he hears. Crazy. Yeah, he, he is going to be a Jeopardy contestant for sure. And then I have uh, grand twins and they're not uh, eight years old. 
And I had one come over the other, I had them come over the other day and one goes, Hey, I know your first name now. <laughs> and it was funny to hear them call me Mary. But they're silly. They're silly. This fiber has so much glitter. I don't know if you can see it. It's all over my arm. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. See? I bet you guys have fiber everywhere, huh? Refrigerator, dryer, washer. I don't know what I do. So did you guys make any New, uh, New Year's resolutions this year? I really, well, I... And well, I did the class. That's kind of a that's kind of a thing, but no big New Year's re resolutions this year. Just like just get through the year. <laughs> Let's just get through the year. Uh, I'm tearing this in half. I'm tearing this um, for the thick and thin. I tear it so um, yeah, inside your coat sleeves, right? I tear it to the thickness where I might want the thick part, so I don't have to. Um, though I can do it the other way, but I usually tear it up to the point where that's, th that's how I want the thick part. But if I coil this, you'll be able to see, um, how thick those parts, they're a little thicker than it looks like on here. This staple is really long in this, um, this fiber. Like, wow, like, look at that. Like, super long. Super long. Oh, that's nice. It focused on it. So that means my thick parts are super, th super long. Because when you do thick and thin, you need to pull it to the point where it's almost going to come apart. And then you slide your hand down. Almost going to come apart. Slide your hand down. And you can't spin too fast with this, with these thick and thins. Hello, Pat. Oh, do I have the jumbo flyer? I don't have the jumbo flyer. Um, you know what? I have a fast flyer. I just got the fast flyer because I thought I wanted to spin cotton. And I'm like, nope. I, there's just something about cotton I cannot get the hang of. And I don't really like it. Cause it just doesn't have any give or I don't know. It's like, there's no life to it to me. Um, but I was looking at, what was I looking at? I think I was looking at the, was it the woolly winder? I think I was looking at the woolly winder cause I had a, um, a Louette S10 and I had the woolly winder for that. Oh my gosh. Do you guys have one? They're awesome. They are awesome. No change in hooks. They just automatically go. These thick and thins are a super fast spin. Super fast spin. And sometimes if I, um, if I don't coil these, I would just um, seam them actually. Um, pretend cotton is over processed yak. <laughs> oh, yes, Kathleen, you are super spoiled. How many wheels do you have? Uh, you know what? I've had so many different wheels that I've gotten rid of. And I don't know. I don't know why I get rid of them. It's so crazy. Like I had the Loet S10 and then I upgraded to the Kromsky. And then I had the, so I had the Kromsky Sonata. Then I had the Kromsky Fantasia. But yeah, it was it was okay, but I didn't need both of those Kromskis. Seven. Oh my gosh. Well then I had the country spinner, sold it, bought another one, sold it. I'm so stupid. And then so now I have kind of a country spinner. It's a that's a no namer, but it's um has a very huge bobbin and a super slow whorl, probably two or three twists per inch. Um I do need another, um, well, and that big, okay, this is a flyer lead wheel, and um, the big bulky's a bobbin lead wheel, 
And I kind of wanted one more bob and lead wheel that isn't so bulky, especially for the class, so I could um, teach on that. Seven, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I'd put seven wheels. <laughs> I mean, it's bad enough I have two. two. <laughs> My husband's like, where are we going to put that one now? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Somewhere under the bed, outside, in the garage. No, not in the garage. <laughs> it's too humid here. Have you guys seen that really big um, Carter that brother has? It's the replica of the Patrick Green Cottage Carter. It's a roving, roving Carter, Carter. It's huge, 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 huge. $14,000 for that thing. So crazy, crazy. I don't know if the first one's been sent out yet. I know there's a few um, people have put down payments on them, but um, yeah, they're, and the footprint's like, um, what did he say? It's like two, two feet by four feet. It's the footprint of the Carter. So you could put it on a table. Oh, this stuff is everywhere. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so anyway. When is my, oh, when is your Kathleen? When is your great grandmother's? When is a nano that lives in my truck's club? <laughs> Oh, I did get an electric car. I did get an electric one. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, it's a, it's the something cube with a K. Um, it's, what do they call that? Where they, the 3D printing. And it looks like copper. It's pretty cool. But we have to, um, there, there's something um, uneven with the base. Uh, well, anyway, we're sending it back and getting a new one, but. So I turned it on. I didn't really spin on it yet, but man, it goes super fast, super fast. And it's kind of kind of cool looking. It's not here, so I can't show you, but um and I had the that eel spinner, that really small one. It was okay. Um, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny. But this one, this one has like a regular bob bobbin size, which is kind of cool. So Pat, how's your how's your little how's your store going? That thing with all this stuff going on. We're so open in Florida; it's crazy. And my daughter in North Carolina is so close, and she's like, "I'm gonna move to Florida." Oh goodness! All right, we're just plugging along, plugging along. Yeah, those woolly winders are nice. Did you guys get your stimulus check yet? We got ours the other day. Check your bank account. Oh, so I haven't done any of <laughs> I am just, I'm going to stress out it by March or April. So my accountant died. He had um, colon cancer. So he died this year, so I needed to get a new accountant. And with all this stuff going on for 2020, I just, you know, and I, and I do keep up with my books, but man, I just was like a deer in the headlights for months, you know, trying to get through the day. And um, I haven't done anything, but my daughter's an, a CPA, so, and she mostly does auditing, so she's going to help me get my books together. Thank goodness. Yeah, bills to pay, no kidding. Oh, you got the Hanson East Spinner and the Ashford. Um, Kathleen, which one do you like better um, with the East Spinners? I always recommend the East Spinners to people that have knee problems and things like that, hip problems if it hurts to treadle. Um. <laughs> If it hurts to treadle, you know, go electric. I have a Kiwi 2 and Nano Plus drops. Them. You know what? I had the Kiwi. Um, eh, oh, no, no, I didn't have a Kiwi. No, I didn't. I had some. The Joy. Got rid of that, too. Gosh. Yes, a good CPA is worth their weight in gold. But unfortunately, my daughter won't, doesn't do taxes after all those years of schooling. But I got a new one. 
He sounds good. Um, I have to say my last accountant was not that great or invested in my future. <laughs> uh, oh, Ashford of Camping. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so proud of my kids. One's a nurse, but she's not working. She has um, three three boys that she homeschools. She's been homeschooling since day one. So she's, you know, raising her kids and being a mom and doing good. My other daughter works with me and has a little part of the business. That's Jessica. You guys have probably seen Jessica, Jessica or seen her name on the paper and um, on your little invoice. Oh, and, and Carissa, Carissa's the nurse. She actually is doing some work, work too as well. So I gave them a little section of the biz so they can make a little extra money. And especially during this time, it was really helpful to them. So we're so thankful for everybody that's helped us um, scrape and kick and scream this, through this year and get out okay the other side. Oh my goodness. Yeah, challenge for sure, huh? Challenge for sure. But, Okay, that's good. See how fast that is? We've been doing this for like 20 minutes. <laughs> Yay, Jessica. Yay, Jessica. Oh, she, oh, dude, she is a hard worker. It took her a little while to catch on, but man, and she is so concerned about the customer. I mean, I am too, but she is really, oh, I think the customers would like this little something in there. I think this would be cute for the customers. Like she's very very thoughtful um, to the customers. And she's really a great person to have on my side. That's for sure. Yeah, she's awesome. And it's allowed her to stay at home with her two kids. And who knew that all of this would happen? And um, we're so thankful that the girls could stay home and um, work. Just never know what's going to happen, huh? What else is going on? Jellyfish season at the at the beach. <laughs> There's jellyfish everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. See the thick and the thin. See how the thin part is has more twists because it's thin, and the thicker part has less twist because it's thick. And that's how thick and thin works. So the first um, module of the, um, I won't keep you guys much longer, of the workshop goes into, because I'm a physical therapist, so it goes into posture, sitting posture, um, position of feet on the treadles, how to make it more efficient, um, parts of the wheel for people that um, don't use the correct terminology. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, learning how to talk to each other in spinning ease instead of calling something you know that hole where your yarn goes in and winds on that funny thing at the top that spins around <laughs> uh, so it's getting the new spinners to speak in our language so we understand what they're talking about but it's fun to see so many oh my gosh there's this girl, her name is Astrid. I don't know if you guys have run across her. She's 11, 11 years old. This girl is spinning and weaving. How, how is this called? Houndstooth pattern? Spinning and weaving and um, knitting. Oh my gosh, this girl does everything. Don't teach my mamma and how to spin. Oh, I got to tell you. So they lovingly and fondly call me the yarn lady at the mail at the mail place. They're so good to me. They take care of me, but I'm nice to them. Super nice. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah, that's almost full. The yarn lady. Oh my gosh. So one time I had my car broken into. Oh, I wasn't broken into. I left, I left the, the doors open. And I had a box in there that I was going to ship. And 
when I opened my car, I swear it looked like a gorilla grabbed the box and like pulled out a chunk and there was raw um, wool in there. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, the guy, whoever it was probably was like, oh, what the heck is that? <laughs> Oh, and he didn't take it. That was funny. That was weird, right? Open the door and you see somebody was in your car. I didn't like that. So now I make sure and lock my lock my car every night. We had a possum in the yard, and I think the people across the street killed it because they have chickens, and I guess the possum was getting in their chicken. So um, my husband's like, come outside and look on the, look on the roof. There were all these vultures sitting on the roof <laughs> and they, dude, they cleaned everything of that thing. They left the organs, the tail. They didn't need anything of the tail, the bones. Amazing how efficient these birds are. <laughs> your mailman shakes your boxes and squeezes your package. <laughs> Ah, that's funny. That's really funny. He knows a return address. <laughs> so sometimes on the boxes I'll put, or on the packages I'll put, um, you know, to the amazing or to the wonderful or something. And people get a kick out of it because their mailman's like, hey, this is to the wonderful Janice. <laughs> uh, oh, I know. Poor little critter. He was so cute. We were sitting um, in the back. And my dog like loses her mind. And the thing is like sitting right by the door. Like if our door was open, if our sliding door was open, it would have been in the house. That would have been like, whoa, that would have been crazy. But, um, and then the next day he was dead. I think someone killed him because I think they shot him because he looked really healthy. And I honestly don't mind, um, don't mind the possums in the yard. Oh, the thick and thin. Well, I could steam it put it on a nitty, nitty knotty and then steam it. Um, or I could do coils or something like that, but I won't be doing it. So yes, they eat ticks. See, that's what I said. And she's like, well, they get, they eat our chickens or the, I don't know what they do. Mess with their chickens, but yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So that's really th thick and thin, super fast to do super fast. You can even do it with, um, with bats though. So, I find that the it's not as nice because it's a woolen prep because this is a worse of prep so the fibers are more aligned and I think the thick part it just looks a little nicer if you use um, a worse of prep in my in my opinion but you don't need to you can do whatever you want <laughs> you know I mean possum oh porcupines you por do you have porcupines where you live. <laughs> Well, I've never seen a porcupine. Oh, we had armadillos. And um, let me move this up here because I'm done spinning. Armadillos. Um